Hey folks, welcome back to Nutrition Made Simple, a video series that we created that takes a look at ideas trending natural health topics, and then we break them down into easy to understand and actionable steps. My name is Brian Strickland. I have here with me Adam Chauncey. He's one of our health coaches um, and a certified nutritionist here at Nutrition World. And I wanted to pick his brain about the carnivore diet today because I think it's something that people are interested in, but they may not know a whole lot about and may have some valid concerns about what the carnivore diet entails. But um, we're going to talk to Adam about kind of his eating habits today, including the carnivore diet. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, start with this very simplest and most obvious, what is the carnivore diet, just in case there is somebody out there who doesn't know what it is. Sure. So carnivore is fairly well known for some of the folks on Instagram, the the trendy folks that primarily eat meat or only eat meat. You've got some zealots that will just eat strictly muscle meat. You've got some that do the meat and organs, okay. which is probably the preferable route because mm. of the higher amount of nutrition, um, bones, marrow, all that kind of stuff, all that primal type stuff. Um, there's a guy called Liver King that's really popular on Instagram <laughs> that a lot of folks poke fun at, but I, I'll give him credit. The man eats raw liver and all that kind of stuff and has no health issues so far as we know, right? Yeah. And uh, then you've got more folks kind of like me that do a carnivore-ish diet, mm -hmm. which is primarily meat, once again, meat-based with a, you know, an exception for seasonal fruits, vegetables, uh, but not any high amounts. Okay. You know, the, the whole basis of the carnivore diet is to reduce inflammatory properties that a lot of plants hold. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, plants aren't just the, the perfect type of food that they're kind of made out to be. They do have a lot of defense chemicals that mm -hmm. certain people that are kind of sensitive to, that, to those chemicals um, have to avoid. So uh, it, it's a really good diet for many folks, especially if they have certain sensitivities, certain gut issues, and many other inflammatory issues too. So. so one of the questions I have is because you're including seasonal fruits and vegetables into your diet, which is primarily carnivore, how is this different from any other kind of low carb eating lifestyle or even keto in particular? Sure. So there's no real emphasis on anything really aside from the meat right mm -hmm. and that's probably the primary difference like with keto there's an emphasis on if you do traditional keto which i'm a bit of a uh uh a little, a i, I get hyper focused on yeah. the actual definitions right um, just because of the nature of my my um, kind of business with it so with pure keto i mean we're talking about reducing you know problematic brain activity so it's high fat mm -hmm. you can't do a ton of protein because that will kick you out of ketosis you mm -hmm. can't do a ton of other stuff because that will kick you out of ketosis it's right. primarily fat and then you've got the dirty keto you've got which is like the pork rinds and queso dip and all that other crap that's not good and then you've got the standard keto that most people do which is really what you would call a modified atkins diet which mm -hmm. is primarily fat still probably 50 or so percent fat and you know 30 to 40 percent protein you know whatever's left is going to be carbohydrate right with the carnivore diet it's much more you load your plate and this is the way i reference it for myself and most of my clients is i'm going to load the plate with at least half meat okay. of some sort and sometimes more sometimes meat and a meat product such as maybe some dairy maybe some yogurt maybe okay something along those lines and then what's left of the plate will be either seasonal fresh vegetables and or a little bit of fruit. Okay. And that's primarily it. So if anything, it's more like a, if you can consider it a ancestral diet, because mm -hmm. it's, you're only eating kind of what's in season and then you're eating some form of game. You know, obviously it's not really wild game anymore, but right. you know, you get a cow or you get a free range chicken or something of that nature. So it's kind of its own thing, but it's more of a traditional style of eating. Okay. It's not really, I don't really consider it a diet so much because it is how most civilizations have eaten for thousands of years anyway. It's so, just a little bit more, um, it's a little different, yeah. you know, just based, just because of the time and age we're in. Would it be safe to say that it's kind of like a meat heavy paleo diet ish? Yeah, you could definitely call it that. Paleo has a lot of nuts and seeds okay. and legumes in it. Gotcha. Which I'm not a fan of because of the problematic issues it gives with uh, with gut dysbiosis patients. Yeah. Which the majority of my clients have. 
and uh, myself included. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, so a lot of folks can't tolerate that with things like diverticulitis, diverticulosis, and any kind of IBS, just about the the nutrient, the antinutrients really in those seeds, um, the sheaths around those um, seeds and nuts with legumes and stuff like beans, Mm -hmm. um, lentils, and, and, you know, any of those things that are going to cause some kind of aggravation, right? That's going to be problematic. So those are totally okay on a paleo diet and a lot of people do fine. Mm -hmm. But when you have people that are a little bit more sensitive that really can't tolerate that, they're going to have to kind of eliminate that. And that's where the carnivore approach is more prudent. Okay. Gotcha. And on the topic of gut issues, I think when you're talking about eliminating a lot of vegetables and you're mm-hmm. consuming a lot of protein gut issues probably are at the forefront of a lot of people's sure. minds is that something that should be a valid concern and how do we approach the lack of fiber um, yeah. in your daily eating yeah so that's the main question i get asked with it so what about fiber and actually today i had a lady who her nutritionist and practitioner put her on metamucil for her diverticulitis issue which you know that's between her and her practitioner but the problem there is fiber is one of the worst things that most people can take for diverticulitis Mm -hmm. because it can aggravate those little pockets Mm -hmm. in your intestines so well what do you feed the gut bacteria then is the next question well fiber acts as a pre and postbiotic for most people the inulin fibers you see in most probiotics you're going to be a prebiotic to kind of set the gut and the tone and then you get the probiotics in, hopefully with some fermented foods and things like that, which animal foods are fantastic for. Okay. And then the postbiotic is typically the um, butyrate backbone of a fiber. Well, the actual best source of butyrate on the planet is grass-finished butter and, and well, red meat. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that the fat there has butyrate in it. So you're going to get that postbiotic benefit quite a bit more from a meat-based diet than you will from a plant-based diet mm-hmm. without a lot of the problematic, you know, antinutrients right. that most right. people will find in, say, like a raw vegan or raw vegetarian diet. Okay. Um, because therein lies the issue, you got to cook a lot of those nutrients out. Mm-hmm. Well, when you cook a lot of those antinutrients out, you also lose a lot of the good nutrients. Right. And that's, you don't typically have that issue unless you just, you know, destroy a, a steak on the grill or something like that but yeah. even then most of the nutrients are still intact okay interesting um i think just to wrap it up what i'm curious is just walk us through some of your daily meals let's mm-hmm. let's do breakfast lunch and dinner what is it that you're eating every day yeah so breakfast is almost always i well for starters i normally have a, a time restricted eating schedule so i normally you know fast for 12 to 14 hours a day. So Mm -hmm. I'll break my fast around 11 or noon, Mm -hmm. something like that. And I'll break it with a pretty decent sized uh, protein shake. Okay. Um, Similar to Ed's shake that he's talked about on here, but it's, you know, usually 40, 50 grams of protein, some type of organic or very high quality animal based protein, a fresh fruit of some sort, sometimes a banana, sometimes berries, sometimes, you know, whatever we got laying around. Right. And then I'll sometimes put, Uh, Just depending on my mood, I might put a small serving of some kind of nut butter in there if Mm -hmm. I feel like I can tolerate it. Sometimes my gut doesn't like it, so I don't do it. Um, Ice and what else do I put in there? Maybe a little bit of natural cacao. Yeah. Something like that. Hmm? And that's about it. Pretty basic. Maybe a little bit of uh, water or a uh, organic almond or organic... uh, cow milk yeah something like that okay so protein shake for breakfast what about lunch lunch is going to be normally like today it was a like a beef pasta which is pretty much all beef with a very small amount of pasta (laughs) um so it was like a side serving of a a little bit of a organic um, rice pasta because i don't like the grains or the most of the other grains Uh, rice tends to be pretty easily digestible for most people and not Mm -hmm. brown rice or white rice right so uh, I did that, but that's probably half a pound to three quarters of a pound of meat okay. in that um, with a little bit of organic tomato uh, base. Mm-hmm. And uh, then for dinner, and I also salt heavy on all this stuff because it's one thing that most people lack on a carnivore diet or a keto diet or any kind of low carb diet. They don't get enough salt. Mm-hmm. We don't get enough salt in general anyway. And that's the reason most people actually get constipated is because they don't get enough salt. So they don't stay hydrated. Their mm-hmm. their body can't move water through the gut, the colon, and then there you go, you're backed up. So right. salt's huge. So salt on all that, obviously seasoned it. 
And then with dinner, it's normally, once again, at least half to three quarters of a pound of some type of meat, usually red meat. I do not like chicken for the most part because it's very hard to get good quality chicken. Yeah. And when you can find it, you can't really afford it. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with primarily red meat because ruminants like cattle upcycle nutrients very well okay. and they can detox very well. Most poultry cannot. Gotcha. Right? So you get a lot more inflammatory oils that they eat from the corn and soy they're fed, where cattle can pretty much get rid of that or, okay. you know, clean it up anyway. So um, that's going to be for dinner with, you know, some some vegetables. Sometimes I'm not huge on vegetables because they don't sit well with me. Okay. Uh, I prefer, like, salads when I can tolerate them. Mm-hmm. I do like them, but I can't always tolerate them. So something like that then maybe some fresh fruit maybe a little yogurt maybe something of that sort Uh, nothing super fancy it's going to be once again primarily meat yeah and uh, yeah that's that's about how i wrap it up i usually eat two main large meals a day so i eat between one and two pounds of meat a day which i usually tend toward a leaner type of meat Mm -hmm. um, even if it is beef so that's going to be you know a hundred a pound of a 90 or so lean ground beef is going to be about 100 grams of protein so yeah. i get about 150 to 200 grams of protein just from the meat today and then my yeah. protein shake awesome man thank you so much for sharing all that yeah. with us and we for hope sure. this was informative it's a it's a great uh you know low impact low inflammation lifestyle mm-hmm. eating habit if you want to try it um we would recommend give it a 30-day trial period and you're really not going to see many results if you're just doing it for a week or two but that month is kind of a sweet spot so if it's something you want to try um that's what we would recommend and of course check with your doctor if you have any concerns as always thank you so much for watching everyone like and subscribe for more content just like this and we'll see you next time on nutrition made simple take care